Welcome back everyone. I was able to finish the vertical stabilizer over the last few weeks. And I've got the stiffeners on the elevator skins and got those bent for the trailing edge. My name is Grant Powers and I'm fulfilling a lifelong dream one day at a time. This series chronicles the build of an experimental RV7 two-seat airplane in my garage. My love for aviation was instilled in me by my grandfather at an early age and now I'm seeing my dream become reality. This is Project Life Goal. Let me start off by apologizing to you guys. It's been three weeks since I've made a video. I certainly do apologize. I was doing a much better job earlier in the project keeping uh, videos coming at you on a more consistent basis. Uh, while I have not made as much progress on the plane as I would have liked over those last three weeks, uh, I have made some progress. Unfortunately, uh, weather did get somewhat nicer here, so that honeydew list did grow, and I had to accomplish quite a few things on it. But I was able to get a technical counselor visit in uh, through the EAA technical counselor program after I had riveted on the front spar and that middle rib to the vertical stabilizer. That was the point that I went and took it over to the technical counselor before putting on the rear spar assembly. So I got the green light from the technical counselor to go ahead and close up the vertical stabilizer. So that's what we're doing here is riveting on with the squeezer, the rear spar assembly. Very straightforward process went very quick because you obviously have good access all the way around from the that outboard rib all the way to the root rib. The only rivets that did give me a little bit of trouble were the root rib to the rear spar assembly. Those 1 8 rivets that you see in the bottom of the video frame. I did end up having to do those with a hand squeezer, just the uh, the access of the hand squeezer versus the pneumatics made it a little bit easier actually. I would say that if, like me, you don't have a experienced builder helping you, definitely do find that technical counselor in your area. They are a great resource uh, to point out things that you may not be noticing. So after finishing closing up the vertical stabilizer, this item got hung on the wall. So that is a great feeling to have a piece done. And I went ahead and I moved on to the elevators. Here I am taking off the blue film of the right elevator skin. And we will be putting on the stiffeners to this elevator. So there's a little bit of a different process compared to what I've been doing previously. So I'm going to have to go ahead and dimple up this elevator skin and then prime it to put on those stiffeners. And then we'll actually come back and we'll finish match drilling the spars and the ribs to it. I went ahead and I taped off all those holes just so that I wouldn't dimple anything more than I had to since obviously we have not done the match drilling for the spar or the ribs yet at this point. So we're going to kind of do a, a little split here and perform some of the operations in, in two different steps. Not a, not a huge deal, just a little different than what we're accustomed to. While it is definitely awesome of Vans to do a majority of the hard bending for you, uh, the dimples towards that uh, trailing edge of the elevator were a little bit more of a challenge than... Uh, the previous parts of the skins for the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer, but not too terribly difficult. If you've got somebody that can give you a, a hand in holding the piece, uh, that would definitely make the process a little bit easier. While I was uh, here, I decided to go ahead and just do the same operations on the left elevator skin. A little bit different because of that trim tab cut out, but not any more difficult. I uh, did the same thing, just went ahead and taped off all the holes that uh, had not received match drilling yet and would not be receiving a dimple at this stage, only doing the stiffener holes right now. The flexibility of this uh, left elevator skin can be a little bit more of a challenge to work with. As you see, I have to keep adjusting my hand holding points just to safely hold the piece and keep it aligned appropriately to the DRDT tube. 
And on a unrelated note to plane building, I have added in some slightly better audio recording equipment. So you guys will have to let me know if you notice a difference and uh, if it's a better listening experience for you guys. Nothing too terribly uh, crazy in here. Just uh, trying to make things a little bit better for you guys. Obviously, I don't have a sound studio, so it will never be perfect. An audio engineer, I am not. After completing the dimpling and the, the priming operations, I went ahead and then I started adding in the rivets and then taped them on since this will be a back rivet operation for those stiffeners. I usually try to do uh, all of my similar operations in one batch. So I placed all of the rivets and all the holes and then I came back and did the taping. Uh, a couple of times that did not work out in my favor. I would catch an edge of the elevator skin and then a bunch of rivets would pop out. So I would say probably don't do that on this one. Um, the elevator skins are a little bit flimsier. They're not as stiff. So they uh, do have a tendency to bounce and wobble quite a bit, which you can certainly see in this uh, sped up video. The other thing that I did do, which I would not recommend, is I went ahead and I placed the rivets and taped them in on both sides. Uh, don't do that. Those rivets on the skin side that you're not working on do have a tendency to kind of get in your way. But I'd already taped them on, so I wasn't going to undo that work. Uh, I always started in the middle of each stiffener, work towards the leading edge, and then finish from the middle of the stiffener towards the trailing edge. Since every time you squeeze a rivet, it does cause the pieces to expand just slightly. So I was trying to balance out those loads a little bit. The last couple of rivets there towards the trailing edge are difficult to uh, get done properly because of the extent of the bend that is already in the skin as it comes from vans. So having a second set of hands definitely would have made this process easier. It is a little difficult to kind of push that top skin that you're not working on back enough that you can get the rivet gun in there. Just take your time. If you have somebody that can help you, obviously take advantage of that. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward process for back riveting. It's not difficult. It's uh, fairly easy. Um, I would say though that I'm actually not a huge fan of back riveting and uh, a lot of people are probably going to find that interesting. Uh, uh, one of the people that I've spoken to at least, they seem to much prefer the back riveting process. I don't know if it was just the mental disconnect for me, you know, you don't have to think about it as much. Um, I don't know, I just found uh, bucking rivets to be a, a more enjoyable process. So. Let me know uh, what your guys' thoughts are on that. Do you prefer back riveting or do you prefer bucking? Uh, love to see your, your comments below. After finishing the riveting of the stiffeners on the right elevator, went ahead and moved to the left elevator. Uh, just trying to do these similar operations in a, in a batch. Nothing more really to say about that. It was a very much the similar operation. I didn't have any other gotchas. Same things apply. Just be careful when doing the rivets towards that trailing edge. And uh, you, one thing I did do is you do see I've got uh, black electrical tape wrapped around the rivet gun just so I wouldn't scratch up the, the primer since the finish on my rivet gun at least is, is very rough. Um, so do that if yours is similar to mine just to spare yourself some heartache with scratches in your freshly primed part. If you are new to plane building and you're building a, a Vans aircraft or another aluminum sheet metal aircraft, um, particularly for these Vans ones, I would say start with those stiffeners that are actually forward of the trim tab section. Those are certainly much easier to do because you're not fighting the other side of the skin while you're trying to back rivet that one side. And then start moving on to these stiffeners where you actually have to deal with that trailing edge. That would be a, a much better approach to gain some experience and some comfort working on your airplane. I then proceeded to cut out the hinge doublers. Both elevators come together in one punched part and then you cut out the individual doublers from there. Went ahead and did the deburring operations on them and then separated them out, designated ones for the left and ones for the right. And after completion of the deburring on those, I went ahead and started work on the spar. Right now I am working on the right elevator. 
So while we did the skins and the stiffeners for both at the same time, I'm now transitioning to working on just one of the elevators. I'm not trying to do all the spars and the ribs for both at the same time. Uh, it just makes it easier for me to keep all of the parts straight. And that's the same order that Vans calls out in their plans as well. A little bit uh, different with that flange bending the opposite way of all the other spars up to this point in time, but nothing, nothing too terribly difficult. We are just using the same files and the same right angle die grinder that I've got. You know, no new tools required for this. Go ahead and click on those doublers and do the match drilling operations. There's also a nut plate in there as well. Make sure that you mark those parts very carefully. Um, I'm not sure how critical it is that the nut plate be marked, uh, but one of them I actually took off before I marked it, so I might not have it back in the same orientation. Uh, so just make sure you mark things uh, earlier than you think you'll actually need to. Went ahead and straightened up all the, the ribs. There's actually a surprisingly high amount of pieces that are in the elevator um, given the size of it. After completing the fluting and seaming for these ribs, it's on to deburring. Fairly straightforward. These ribs, though, do have some much tighter corners, and that does make things a little bit more difficult, but nothing that can't be handled with the tools that I already had on hand. That said, though, when I get to the dimpling of these ribs, that's a different story. The elevator, like I said, is a little bit more complex than you might anticipate. So I did have to keep referencing those plans on a very, very regular basis just to make sure that I had everything in order. There's a lot of overlapping pieces, a lot of rivets at different angles and very tight quarters on this one. So then I finished up the deburring of the skin that holds on the counterweight to keep the elevator control surface in balance. This is a, an interesting part. Once you add in that lead counterweight, you have to do a couple of holes drilled through that counterweight using pre-existing punch holes that are in that counterweight skin as your guide. And then you have to continue through to the front face of those ribs. Uh, this was my first experience uh, drilling lead. I don't actually have it on video. Uh, definitely use lots of lubrication. I then went ahead and did the final bend of the trailing edge on the elevator skins. Uh, I don't actually have a break, so I just made up a makeshift one using MDF with some hinges and a plethora of clamps. I should have started off on the left elevator skin as opposed to starting on the right elevator skin. Uh, it would have been a little bit easier from a learning curve perspective with the method that I'm using. Even though those MDF panels are you know, fairly stout. Uh, it takes a lot of force to make that final bend. So what I had to do was uh, just keep taking measurements of the gap that was created between the two MDF panels and then just smooth that out so I had a nice straight even bend across the whole length of that trailing edge. Uh, while definitely rudimentary, this technique did work for me uh, and I did not have to go out and purchase anything, which is always uh, a nice thing to have. So after completing that right elevator, I moved to the left elevator skin again. I would just flip the order. Uh, it was definitely much easier bending the left elevator skin than it was the right elevator. Did not have to use anywhere near as many clamps. Uh, probably could have used a few extra clamps for the uh, right elevator, but it turned out just fine. If you look down the, the edge, it looks great. So now with the lead counterweights in on that outboard rib assembly, uh, we can actually move towards attaching that to the spar and then adding in the skin to start doing the match drilling operations. There are a lot of rivets that are going to go into that relatively small area on the outboard side of the elevator skin. You're going to be dancing around Clecos if you're building your own plane. With how tight those flanges are, how close together they are on these ribs, it is a little bit more of a challenge to do the, the seaming on them to get them straight. Uh, just took a little bit of extra time, a little care, uh, but they weren't too terribly uh, out of whack from Vans, which was, was nice, because uh, you do spend a little bit of time on that in comparison to the others. 
a lot of referencing the the plans just to make sure I've got things in the right order. Um, sometimes, depending on the the way you have the pieces sitting on your bench, it can be hard to get the orientation straight in your mind. So I just had to keep going back and forth a couple times to double check it. Um, getting ready to place this assembly into the skin. Did have to move a couple of clicos around so that it would fit. That outboard rib section, you're going to find a lot of the 330 seconds clicos are not going to quite fit because there will be clicos underneath in the ribs and spars that will interfere. Uh, it does make match drilling a little bit interesting and makes it difficult to keep uh, sorted out which holes you've already done the match drilling on and which ones you haven't done. So I would recommend uh, doing all of the outboard rivets for your match drilling all at once and then going along the, the spar and finishing up as opposed to uh, skipping every other. Then went ahead and put the elevator horn on. This gave me a little bit of trouble. I couldn't quite get the uh, Clecos in at first, so I did have to drill out the holes in that uh, metal horn first, and then I was able to insert the Clecos and do the final match drill. Mostly just because of that powder coating. It, it adds a little bit of extra to the hole so your Clecos don't quite fit. And then it's uh, just match drill away. Again, that outboard section, you will do a little bit of dancing around all of the other Clecos. Uh, just take your time on it. Don't uh, get too distracted so you can keep your order in place. The trailing edge of the ribs do have a few holes that you actually have to drill 100% uh, through the, the rib stock using the pre-punch hole in the skin as a guide. Using the electric cordless drill really is not the best tool when you actually need to, to drill a fresh hole like that. Uh, I have to take my time, be extra careful so that I don't make the hole in the skin out of round. Uh, I may invest in a uh, pneumatic drill just for those circumstances, just to make things a little bit easier down the road. We'll see how many more of those holes I encounter once I get out of the empennage. If uh, you've already built an RV7, uh, if you could comment, let me know if you think that would be wise. If there's a lot of that style of holes to drill, that would make having that pneumatic drill definitely an advantage. Well, and then it's on to the disassembly, so we can start the deburring. Did have to mark up a few parts that I had not marked up previously. Again, Easy Burr has been fantastic. Really enjoying it, particularly in the uh, tight spaces of these ribs. I'm not sure how you would accomplish deburring the backside of some of these holes without an easy burr actually. Uh, so I'd be curious to know uh, what other builders have done for those very, very tight spaces for deburring the backside of the hole if you're not using an easy burr or you're just using scotch bright pads. Uh, let me know in the comments below. While we get through the rest of the deburring footage here, I did go ahead and do all of the dimpling for the ribs and the spars, but I did that off camera. I still have to do the scuffing of the parts to do prime for them, which again, I'll, I'll do off camera. And then we'll get to do final assembly on the elevator for the, the right elevator, and then we can start up on the left elevator. I'm also gonna be doing final assembly on the horizontal stabilizer. Did also get the green light from the technical counselor to do that. So uh, we'll have a couple of other parts going on the wall here relatively quickly. Uh, which is, is great. I'm really looking forward to seeing everything come together. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, I apologize that it's been uh, over three weeks since I last got you a video. Where I'm at right now is that I have 67 hours of build time into this project for a total of 76 hours of project time, which includes inventory and cleaning related items and then another 27 hours of video editing. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button, it really does help me out. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell so that you get alerts when I post new videos. And what's coming up next, uh, I still have a couple of dimpling items left. Uh, how to get a different dimpling tool for the very end of these ribs. The uh, Pop rivet style dimpler uh, just unfortunately does not fit in those. That tool did arrive, so I will be doing that here shortly. Then we'll move on to prime of these parts, and then we can do final assembly of the right elevator. Also have final assembly of the horizontal stabilizer to do, so look forward to those coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and go start your life goal.